But as it is written, I have not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. When we think about the kingdom, most brothers think of like the small, minute terms. No, but the vastness of the kingdom, the greatness of the kingdom, dealing with the knowledge, wisdom, understanding, and the information alone that we're going to receive when we get to the kingdom. That's on a whole nother level. Now all right, Shalom. First and foremost, I would like to give all praise and glory unto Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shah, Bahashim Rakakwadash. Double honors unto the apostles and the elders of GMS who rule well, teach well, being great examples to his younger brothers. And peace and blessings, salutations to the hopeful that got there pushing his word and truth. And it's a series across the four winds in the name of Yahweh Bashim Al Shah, pushing to get up out of here. Shalom to the hopeful that the believers, the listeners whom have came back to the obedience of the scriptures through faith in Yahweh Bashim Al Shah. All right, and uh, what I want to get into today, you know, is um. Going to some snippets of this documentary I was watching, the untold story of the Empire of Vespasian. Okay, and it says some things about, you know, Roman culture, you know, that shows us that America, all right, is Rome reloaded. You know, the way that America, you know, runs their empire, you know, mimics, you know, the way Rome ran its empire. Okay. From military, you know, to the social life, okay, to you know the um, the culture, okay, so forth and so on. All right, was Vespasian, you know, when you go into it, he was an emperor around around the time of 70 A.D. He was the last emperor, you know, when you go into the year of the four emperors, he was the last, you know, emperor, okay, to uh, take that seat, you know, and they. Give him credit to pretty much, you know, bringing Rome back to a golden age. Okay. And you had Titus, you know, which uh, finished off the, um, what they call the Roman, all right, um, Jewish wars. All right. Where there was Rome versus the Southern Kingdom. Okay. And um, this is where you get the arch, uh, arch of Titus, you know, because Titus, you know, he finished that campaign. You know, it was him and his father Vespasian, but Vespasian left off the campaign you know with jake you know warring with jake you know to go solidify you know um the the uh the, the the seat of emperor okay so this is a pretty interesting um documentary you know it's on the channel odyssey you know ancient history pretty good um channel you know i watched a few documentaries off there pretty informative but um just going into um rome in general you know how it relates to america i want to play a few snippets okay just to draw the parallel okay matter of fact before i do that um i come back to that this is uh the book of ecclesiastes chapter one verse nine it says the thing that have been it is that which shall be and that which is done is that which shall be done. And there is no new thing under the sun. Okay. So just as we speak about reincarnation. People coming back. Okay. Well kingdoms are reincarnated. Okay. Because the people from those kingdoms. Come back in the earth doing the same thing. Okay. And what we're seeing. You know Rome has resurrected itself back in the earth. You know through America. NATO. And the EU, this beast system, okay, with America, you know, being the centerpiece, man, okay, the capital of this new Rome. All right, so let's play this. A really humble looking building, of course, is really the engine room of Rome. One thinks of Rome as circuses and theatres and temples, but this is really the most important thing because this is where the food is made. The Roman poor were given this amazing dole. They didn't have to find any food. The emperor provided that free. He also watered them or provided wine for them. They were also entertained. There's never been a society that pampered its poor to such an extent as the Romans did. <laughs> Hear that? So let's run that back. 
that free, he also will. In this huge flour mill at the mouth of the Tiber, corn, most of it imported, was ground night and day to feed Rome's constantly hungry masses. This relatively humble looking building, of course, is really the engine room of Rome. One thinks of Rome as circuses and theatres and temples, but this is really the most important thing because this is where the food is made. The Roman poor were given this amazing dole. They didn't have to find any food. The emperor provided that free. He also watered them or provided wine for them. They were also entertained. There's never been a society that pampered its poor to such an extent as the Romans did. There's never been a society that pampered its poor like the Romans did. Okay? He was speaking of the free food. You know, he was giving free wine. Okay? And uh, entertainment, you know, through games. You know, mainly those gladiatorial games and chariot races, sports, pretty much. Okay? And you look at America culture as all these, um, you know, benefit systems. Okay, there's all these, you know, entertainment and games. All right. And, you know, there's so much variety, you know, a strong drink, you know, from wine, you know, to different, you know, strong drinks. Okay, two for one, you know, margaritas and pretty much America, you know, pampers, you know, it's society. Now, a lot of these things are low quality. Okay, that's given away. But the fact, you know, that, uh, 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 you know, you don't have to be uh, super rich to have convenience. <laughs> you see, in America, you know, that was one of the perks of being a, um, a, a Roman citizen. You would get different perks of the empire, just like today. But being an American citizen, you have the, the benefit of, of, um, uh, of, of getting paid in the American reserve currency. That means that your currency is accepted worldwide. Okay, and it has a lot of global spending power. You know? So just as Rome citizens has certain perks. Alright? American citizenship has perks, man. You know? And uh, um, there was a uh, precept when you go here in Ecclesiastes. You know, and as you will get, you know, those dainties of um, <laughs> of Rome, you will become Romanized. OK. Because one thing about it, when you, you know, ruling a big empire, your thing is to keep your subjects at ease. You know, so you wouldn't have, you know, constant rebellions and, you know, attempts of an overthrow. Okay, because you go into this, uh, Ecclesiastes 7 and 7, it says, Surely <clears throat> oppression, oppression make it a wise man mad. Because if all you did was put oppression on the people, okay, eventually it, it would be an uprising. Okay, you will always have to deal with uprising. <laughs> if you just put, you know, pure oppression on people, no relief. Okay. But a way to keep the slaves content with being slaves, which we're going to get into later on, <laughs> okay, in this uh, little clip, all right, what do you do? You start to give them gifts, and it says, and a gift destroys the heart, the mind, okay? And you look at why people that now, they have no thought of leaving America empire to the point that you can put any candidate in front of them and they will still participate in the madness. You can show them how off the society is and how their government is against them. They still will try to fix, all right, the chaos themselves, man. Okay, because their mind is destroyed. Jake don't want to hear about a, a, a kingdom outside of this, outside of this new Roman Empire. Okay, because gifts have destroyed their heart, you know, and we... Uh, 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 were destroyed We was in that mindset You know We didn't care about What the government was doing And you know Nah man We were just Engulfed in the day to day And and, and, and the benefits That came With this society man <laughs> Okay Buffeting on the flesh And you read this in the um, uh, 
NLT, Ecclesiastes 7 and 7 said, Exhortation turns wise people into fools and bribes corrupt the heart or the mind. Okay? So now, you know, we live in a society where people really don't care how things function like that. As long as they can get their day-to-day -day benefits, they really don't care. Okay? As long as they can get their, their liquor, their drugs, they can, you know, get their rocks off, they can eat. They really don't care. You know, even if they do speak on particular things on TikTok, they're really not going to be active like that, man. They're not, they're, they're not geared to do anything about it. You know, you'll get a complaint. <laughs> okay? But you, you got the people that are really never uprise because their mind is destroyed through these, the dainties, okay, of, of, of the empire, man. <laughs> okay? So I thought that was interesting. You know, no one pampered his slave, uh, pampered his poor like Rome. And you have to say the same thing about America, man. Homeless people got <coughs> iPhones. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and so much, you know, food and technology just available and floating around that even, you know, homeless people have iPhones and, <laughs> and drinking Starbucks. <laughs> okay? <clears throat> so I'm going to fast forward. Um, I want to go here. Now, this was after the Romans took down um, the, Brit the, um, the Britons and they began to set up puppet governments. Okay, which this is something that America does, you know, when they take down a particular leader and they will put up puppet leaders that will be pro American, okay, or pro, you know, EU, pro West, okay. Well, look at how, you know, <laughs> they pamper. Okay, well, uh, they'll pamper you, all right, for the benefit of the empire, okay? 20 times he will have put up a trophy celebrating his and the second Augusta Legion's victory. But it's all part of this process of we are on the winning side. And one needs symbolism, so one has to visually try and create something that people will remember. of the vanquished, excavated from one of the biggest of the hill forts, their wounds still visible. The survivors would certainly have remembered the day Vespasian came. In pacifying the southwest and subduing the warlords, Vespasian had done well. But the job wasn't finished. Rome needed to put in place a leader, one the people could respect but more importantly, one who would respect Rome. Cogitabnus was just such a man. One of the ways the Romans conquered, besides obviously direct military action, was the use of puppet kings or client kings. That was introducing what we might call actually a quizzling figure into the society. Now, we know that the Romans arrived and probably in their baggage almost, they had this chap called Cogidabnus. The Romans then install him as a sort of puppet king in the Chichester area and then built him an enormous palace. The palace the Romans built for Cogidabnus at Fishbourne. Hmm. You look at this palace. Okay, crazy. You know, and this is what America would do to certain leaders of today. You know, they would take down certain leaders and they would... um prop up pro-American leaders and they will pamper them, you know, with, 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 with you know, with, with money, okay, um, with wealth, with American protection, you know, why you think the Saudis are living like they're living, you know, that's pretty much off the tab of America, man, <laughs> okay, you look at them Saudis, and, you know, they're, they're just living, out the tab and security of, of of America. You see, you look at uh, what 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 Donald Trump said. He told them Saudi princes, you know, if we withdraw from y'all, you won't last two weeks. Okay, so Rome, you know what they would do? They would conquer. Okay, and they would um, uh, place a leader or a puppet leader or a client king. Okay, that was pro Rome, and they would pretty much pamper their king. All right, to fulfill. Okay, certain uh, obligations to Rome to make sure those taxes get paid to Rome, 
to um uh, uh pretty much spread Roman culture, you know, to that uh new territory that they would conquer, that those new people that they had conquered. Okay, the same thing that America does today on a much larger scale. Okay, well, let's play a little more. Was breathtaking. The largest villa outside of Rome. Here he received the other chiefs as they came to visit from their mud huts. The message was clear. So was his authority. The advent of Rome brought good news and bad news. First the bad. Resistance would be crushed, arms confiscated, Roman law enforced, and finally, biggest bogeyman of all, the Roman tax collector. Then, the good news. Peace, roads, towns, clean water, sanitation, commerce encouraged and housing improved, baths, theaters, entertainments, Tacitus puts it beautifully. Rude nations would be coaxed toward peaceful paths through comfort. Temples, markets, and houses built. The sons of chieftains educated in the liberal arts. Those who had spurned Roman speech would aspire to rhetoric and adopt the toga. And he concludes mockingly. So, by slow degrees, the Britons were seduced by pleasant pastimes, till finally the gullible natives came to call their slavery culture. Until the gullible, <laughs> until the gullible locals began, began to call their slavery culture. They began to call their slavery culture. It was a slow cook. Okay? So Rome would come conquer you and with force. Okay, but next thing you know, you will have all these infrastructure going up. Okay? You will have, you know, um, uh, uh, you know, pretty much uh, aqueducts where water will come in conveniently. Okay? Pretty much they will modernize, okay, these villages and turn them into cities. Same thing that America can do now. Like, it's nothing for America to throw up a, a city, a, a town. You know, you go to a lot of p people, you know, that don't live in their hometown and they go back. And it's a it's a whole city now. You know, when you was there, you know, you, know, you might remember two, three rows. You go back, it's a whole city. You know, shopping scripts, theaters. Okay. <laughs> New high school, you went like, there's nothing for... You know, and that's what these uh, America does to these third world countries. They'll go conquer, you know, for the sake of those resources. But in exchange, they'll throw up, you know, modern infrastructures in these poor places. Okay. And uh, people fall in love, you know, with the convenience. And then pretty much slavery becomes a culture to where you go work for the interests of the empire all day. But then after you get off, you get to enjoy the, the, the modern conveniences that their empire has given you. You know, it's the trade off. You pretty much trade sovereignty for convenience. You know, and Rome had mastered it. OK, and America does the same thing. <laughs> OK, so let's play it again. Run it back a little bit. largest villa outside of Rome. Here he received the other chiefs as they came to visit from their mud huts. The message was clear. So was his authority. The advent of Rome brought good news and bad news. First the bad. Resistance would be crushed, arms confiscated, Roman law enforced, and finally, biggest bogeyman of all, the Roman tax collector. Then, the good news. Peace, roads, towns, clean water, sanitation, commerce encouraged and housing improved, 
baths, theatres, entertainments. Tacitus puts it beautifully. Rude nations would be coaxed toward peaceful paths through comfort. Temples, markets, and houses built. The sons of chieftains educated in the liberal arts. Those who had spurned Roman speech would aspire to rhetoric and adopt the toga. And he concludes mockingly, so by slow degrees, the Britons were seduced by pleasant pastimes till finally the gullible natives came to call their slavery culture. call it slavery culture <laughs> you see and that's what you see today you know society to where you know they fight for a culture where they're slaves you know especially Jake you see and they may you know they become slave you know to this system you know because if you're chasing a bag well in order to chase a bag all right, the more you, you chase, the more you have to give to the empire. You know, the more desires you want, the more status, the more clout. Okay, the more you have to submit to the empire to get. Okay, <laughs> and this is why you go here to the book of Proverbs. Uh, all right, 23. Yep, it says, and when thou sittest to eat with a ruler, Consider diligently what is before thee. Yeah, because when you sit down and eat, you know, especially in ancient times, you know, business would be discussed, you know, over dinner, over meals. Okay? So when you come, you know, uh, <laughs> when you, when thou sittest to eat with a ruler, consider diligently what is before thee, what's being presented. What is he presenting? Okay? What is this man presenting? What's it, what's 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 his angle? What what he what you know? What is he up to? Okay, and these devils even going back to the garden. You know, he presented something you know to Eve. <laughs> you see, and in the Romans, he was presenting you know particular things to the earth to these to the, what they call barbarians. Okay. And as, as America, he, hey, he's doing the same thing. The Edomites are running the same game. You know, they come and sit down, okay, and they make these proposals, okay, as if they have they be, your best interest in mind, okay? It says, and put a knife to thy throat if thou be a man given to appetite. And if you, you know, um, are, are weak in the flesh, if you're ruled by the flesh, he got you. Because one thing about it, this devil knows how to pamper the flesh, man. <laughs> you know, if you're giving over to appetite, as um, we're taught, okay? This is um, Sirach 18 and 30. It says, Go not after thy lust, but refrain thyself from thine appetites. But refrain thyself from thine appetites, man. <laughs> okay? You're supposed to be disciplined. And you will have certain leaders that will have integrity. And what they, what they would do, they would demonize them and eventually get them out of there, man. You know? In certain cases, man. <laughs> you see? Well, there's supposed to be a level of integrity, man. Like you had Eleazar, you know, who wouldn't eat the swine's flesh. They couldn't bribe him. You know, and he died in his integrity, man. Okay? Uh, 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 the three Hebrew boys we always get into, they kept their integrity, man. They didn't want to bow down to the empire of Babylon. <laughs> you see? So when this man presents something, no one, you know, and if you're, you know, governed by the flesh, you can't control your, your your appetite, your fleshly appetite. He got you, man, because he know how to pamper the flesh. Okay? It says, be not desirous of his dainties, for they are deceitful meat. 
you know, as he comes with his convenience and I'm going to invest in this and I got this program going, I got this for you, uh, uh, we want to make sure the women are good, you know, women's liberations and equal rights for women and, you know, <laughs> I give you these dainties, you know, you get these jobs, you get these benefits, you get these careers, you know, you get this assistance, you get this, you get that. You can come to our colleges. You can get these grants. Okay. You're you're included now. Because it's all what they call an illusion of inclusion. Okay. It's deceitful. When you go here. You make it seem as if you're included. Okay. <laughs> but ultimately, he's the only one that really benefits. Okay. When you go to inclusion, says the action. Or state of including or being included within a group or structure. The practice or policy providing equal access to opportunities and resources for people who might otherwise be excluded or marginalized, such as those who have physical or intellectual disabilities and members of other minority groups. And it's an illusion of inclusion. As if he's really, he really considers your situation to include you all right for your betterment man okay <laughs> but ever since our people have taken on the ways of this devil it's been downhill from them <laughs> okay and this man has constantly been going up <laughs> okay so you go back all right <laughs> it says be not desirous of his dainties for they are deceitful meat. Okay. This is verse 6. It says. Eat. It says. Eat thou not the bread of him. That have an evil eye. And this man. Has an evil eye. Towards Jake. Okay. This is main evil eyes. Towards Jake man. And our people. Trust him more than anything. Okay. Neither desire thou. His dainty. Uh, meats or his delicacies man okay and the, and this devil you know the more you want to be like him and live like him because you look at jake they won't you know live like esau okay that's why jake these niggas they rap they rap about being rich like edomites okay you look at the average eve she wants the lifestyle of a middle upper middle class edomite woman okay and to get those things what do they have to do conform conform more and more <laughs> hey, to, 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 to wicked ways man okay so the devil you know he knows how to play that game to where he makes you know um, um, you know he knows how to pamper you for you to lose your morals man you know for you to become like him and the more you desire <laughs> you know hey, this beast system the more he turns you out into a beast like him, man. Okay? He knows how to make slavery become a culture for people. Okay? And no one would, <laughs> and no one has been pampered. Okay? <laughs> like uh, uh, the poor of Rome, as it says. Okay? So I thought that was interesting, man. I just wanted to um bring that out. All right? And Lord will, you know, this was edifying, man, because... We got a kingdom of righteousness to look forward to, which we're going to be pampered, okay, in righteousness, man. I think that's in Isaiah 66, and we can end on this, all right. Um, Uh, let me see. Yep, this is Isaiah 65 and 23. It said, They shall not labor in vain as we do now. You know, most of our work and labor is capitalized by the empire. Okay, we get the crumbs of our own labor. Okay, nor bring forth for trouble. All right, as we bring forth seed, not knowing what's going to happen to them, what's going to befall them. Okay, 
for they are a seed of the blessed of the Lord Yahweh by Shemal Shai and their offspring with them. And it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. And while they are yet speaking, I will hear, man. So the Lord is going to be hearing our thoughts and desires, man, and blessing us, you know, as, as, you know, as, 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 as he hears them, man. We got a lot to look forward to beyond this BS of a kingdom where you have to lose your morals and who you are. Okay, for the crumbs of this man's empire, man. You know? So just want to put that out there, Lord. Will you, brothers and you, sisters, edify? Shalom.